Our Savior Jesus Christ started his evangelism ministry with only a handful of disciples, and over time, his ministry grew and the gospel was taken to every corner of the world. Forty years ago, a group of evangelicals from the Association of Evangelicals in Africa met in Nairobi and formed its Kenyan chapter. This marked the birth of what we now refer to as the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. Here they started way back in 1975, out of many cries from different people. Because At that time, um, 1975, the World Evangelical Fellowship um, met in Limuru, which was Brackenhurst, and um, it's from that that it birthed uh, national uh, fellowships, EFK. And from that year, 1975, um, Kenya had to have its own fellowship, and uh, that was how Evangelical uh, Fellowship of Kenya started. Uh, churches which started the evangelical movement in Kenya were, were AIC, Africa Gospel Church, uh, BHE, and uh, Deliverance, uh, Redeemed, and many other, let me say, the Pentecostal group. The key mandate of the EAK is to be the voice of the church in the nation that uh, the, the, the alliance speaks on, on behalf of the church. It also unites the, the church, brings all the evangelicals together, and also involved in the discipline of the clergy within EAK. The thoughts of the founding fathers were to help unite the body of Christ and create a formidable force to carry out evangelism in Kenya. You will find that some of the top uh, ministers worldwide who come to evangelize or come for crusade like Bonge and others, Maurice Cerullo prophets, they come through EAK. And so we have seen many people being reached with the good news of the kingdom. The vision of EAK is to have a people transformed through the power of gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ living in a just and righteous society that glorifies God. Its mission is to empower the evangelicals to bring God's transforming grace to the people of Kenya through a united prophetic voice and holistic ministries. We come together to collaborate, to support one another, to respond to issues that affect the church, to issues that affect the nation, uh, so that we can seek for solutions and work together, even as Christ prayed that we might be one, so that we, the world may know that he was sent by God. Over the years, EAK has grown to become a large institution which has played a major role in shaping evangelism in Kenya. The Alliance currently has a mentorship of 308 denominations, most of which have a national presence that are spread throughout the country. We also have an executive board that is elected by the members themselves. And then we also have at the county level, Evangelical Alliance of Kenya county boards, and then even at the sub-county level. Our focus is solely on our members and we want to make sure that we are able to support them and that we are able to also reach the grassroots. The total membership of the evangelicals in Kenya is estimated at 10 million in about 38,000 congregations. This makes up approximately 32% of Kenyan population. Through its secretariat, EAK runs a number of programs in its quest to attain its objectives. We have been doing a lot of um, projects in the areas of HIV AIDS, capacity building for our pastors in terms of leadership. We've been doing a lot of uh, reproductive health uh, programs. We've been carrying out peace programs. We've been carrying out national prayers. So EAK really watches the backs of our members so they can be able to go out and do what God has called them to do and we then backstop for them. And so you'll find that in our society, for example, there are many, many things that are in the social arena, in the political arena, in the educational sector, in the health sector, every area where anything that would affect the peaceful coexistence of the community, we as a Christian community, we want to see what can we do uh, to help that situation. The journey has had its own fair share of challenges, but has also scored some achievements. The journey has been so good, 
our our movement was felt in the country although when it reached the 80s towards the end of the 80s and 90s uh, it slowed down the, in the 80s up to 1997 when uh, there seemed to be um, wrangles with, within EFK, leadership wrangles. And so there was acrimony at that time when uh, Ibrahim Omondi um, took over as the general secretary. And it was very hard for him until uh, 2000 when the members who had left um, NCCK felt that we need to revamp what was our fellowship, EFK, and we rebranded from EFK to EAK to give it new lease of life. And from there, we elected new leadership. I was elected chairman of the rebranded EAK, and uh, Omondi still held on up to 2003. When we got into the 80s, Nobody was hearing about the Evangelical Fellowship of Kenya. Got to a point where the Evangelical Fellowship became the mouthpiece of the State House, the mouthpiece of the government, uh, uh, as against NCCK, which was at that point seen as a critic of the government. I began concerned that we had sold our prophetic voice uh, for some conveniences that were coming from State House. Uh, that was the slump moment. Kenya has had a number of challenges. Top among this is the cancerous corruption and negative ethnicity, both of which are threatening to tear this country apart. Let's get back to our values. I believe, even in the days and the years that have come and gone, the issue of corruption was nowhere. Where did this monster called corruption come from? Corruption now has become a byword. I mean, it doesn't cause any head to turn uh, because we have heard about it. But should we just settle down and accept it? As a church, as a Christian community, we believe that there are things that we can do that would at least minimize the, the, the incidence and the effects of corruption in our country. There's a Kenya that we've been dreaming about and we believe that a time has come for all of us to be part of that dream. I think we are at crossroads. We are in a very difficult situation as a nation with the issues of corruption, issues of tribalism, issues of uh, uh, drug abuse and uh, human traffic and uh, so many issues that are facing the nation today. The, and, and these are the issues that we as EAK are saying we will not keep quiet. We are going to take the bull by the horn and we are going to start moving on and handling these issues. The results of corruption have been all too evident. Poverty, illiteracy, poor infrastructure, marginalization of many communities, especially the ones in the arid and semi-arid regions, inter-community conflict, and the list goes on and on. We need a transformation. Because at this point, if the evangelical church does not put her act together, we go back to God and be a one voice and begin to speak, then 2017, could be a repeat of violence, and I would hate to see that. So my clarion call to Kenyans today is that we need to have prayer, national prayer days. Now we have had a lot of prayers going around the country because of the case that's happening at The Hague. That is fine, let it go on. But I think the church needs to have prayers to turn the nation back to God, where we are repenting for the sins of this nation. We, as, a, as, a, as especially the current leadership of, of EAK, we are committed to seeing ourselves uh, mobilizing the church to take its rightful place in, 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 uh, in the society. As EAK celebrates its 40 years of existence, it intends to play an even larger role in the transformation of Kenya. It has embarked on an initiative called From Now On Campaign. This initiative hopes to start up a turnaround in this great nation of Kenya. If we kill this monster called corruption and ethnicity, we will move ahead. We need to forget about uh, this spirit of tribalism because the spirit of tribalism is killing this nation. Corruption must not be mentioned 
in the church. It must never be practiced in the church. We need to repent of that. We need to turn our nation back to God. When we have turned our churches back to God to begin with, then we can speak about changing Kenya. And if we can speak with one voice, Kenya will listen to us. All of us must be involved in terms of dealing with this monster called corruption. The Kenya we want is a Kenya free from corruption. From now on, there is no more corruption. From now on, no more drug abuse. From now on, no more alcohol. From now on, all the evils that have been facing our nation have got to come to an end because the church is standing together and we are saying from now on, there is change. i